Nietzsche's Life and Works. Part 1 Introduction Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844 to 1900, was a German philosopher of the late 19th century who challenged the foundations of Christianity and traditional morality. He was interested in the enhancement of individual and cultural health and believed in life, creativity, power, and down-to-earth realities rather than those situated in a world beyond. Central to his philosophy is the idea of life affirmation which involves an honest questioning of all doctrines that drain life's expansive energies, however socially prevalent those views might be. Often referred to as one of the first existentialist philosophers along with Soren Kierkegaard, 1813-1855. Nietzsche's revitalizing philosophy has inspired leading figures in all walks of cultural life including dancers, poets, novelists, painters, psychologists, philosophers, sociologists and social revolutionaries. Part 2 Life, 1844-1900 In the small German village of Rock and Bay Lutzen, located in a rural farmland area southwest of Leipzig, Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche was born at approximately 10 a.m. on October 15, 1844. The date coincided with the 49th birthday of the Prussian king, Friedrich Wilhelm IV, after whom Nietzsche was named, and who had been responsible for Nietzsche's father's appointment as Rockens town minister. Nietzsche's uncle and grandfathers were also Lutheran ministers and his paternal grandfather, Friedrich August Ludwig Nietzsche, 1756-1826, was further distinguished as a Protestant scholar, one of whose books, 1796, affirmed the everlasting survival of Christianity. Nietzsche's grandparents on both sides were from the province of Saxony. With his paternal grandfather, Paternal grandmother, Murdmuth Dorothea Cross, 1778 1856. Maternal grandfather, David Ernst Holler, 1787 1859. And maternal grandmother, Johanna Elizabeth Wilhelm Hahn, 1794 1876. Having been born respectively in the small towns of Bibra, just south of Gina, Reichenbach, southeast of Jena, Zietz, between Jena and Leipzig, and Weilitz, just northwest of Leipzig. When Nietzsche was nearly five years old, his father, Karl Ludwig Nietzsche, 1813-1849, died from a brain ailment, July 30, 1849, and the death of Nietzsche's two-year-old brother, Ludwig Joseph. Traumatically followed six months later, January 4, 1850. Having been living only yards away from Marokanes Church, in the house reserved for the pastor and his family, the Nietzsche family left their home soon after Karl Ludwig's death. They moved to nearby Nomberg and Der Sala, where Nietzsche, called Fritz by his family, lived with his mother. Franziska, 1826-1897. His grandmother, Redmuth, his father has two sisters, Auguste and Rosalie, d. 1855 and 1867, respectively. And his younger sister, Therese Elizabeth Alexandra, 1846-1935. From the ages of 14 to 19, 1858-1864. Nietzsche attended a first-rate boarding school, Schulforda. Located about four kilometers from his home in Nomberg, where he prepared for university studies. The school's rigid educational atmosphere was reflected in its long history. 
history as a former Cistercian monastery, 1137-1540. With buildings that included a 12th-century Romanesque chapel and a 13th-century Gothic church. At Schelforda, a school whose alumni included the German idealist philosopher. Johann Gottlieb Fichte. 1762-1814, and the philologist, Ulrich von Willem Aletz Mollendorf, 1848-1931. Nietzsche met his lifelong friend, Paul Dusen, 1845-1919, who was confirmed at Nietzsche's side in 1861, and who was to become an Orientalist, historian of philosophy. And in 1911, the founder of the Schopenhauer Society. During his summers in Nuremberg, Nietzsche led a small music and literature club named Germania and became acquainted with Richard Wagner's music through the club's subscription to the Zrift for Music. The teenage Nietzsche also read the German Romantic writings of Friedrich Holderlin and Jean Paul Richter along with David Strauss's controversial and demythologizing life of Jesus critically examined, Das Leben Jesu Christ Sperbetet, 1848. After graduating from Schelforda, Nietzsche entered the University of Bonn in 1864 as a theology and philology student, and his interests soon gravitated more exclusively towards philology a discipline which then centered upon the interpretation of classical and biblical texts. 21. 2 F2 As a student of philology, Nietzsche attended lectures by Otto Jan, 1813-1869, and Friedrich Wilhelm Richl, 1806-1876. Jan was a biographer of Mozart who had studied at the University of Berlin under Karl Lachmann, 1793-1851, a philologist known both for his studies of the Roman philosopher, Lucretius, ca. 9955 BCE, and for having developed the genealogical, or stenatic, method in textual recension. Ritual was a classic scholar whose work centered on the Roman comic poet, Plautus. 254-184 B.C. Inspired by Ritchel, and following him to the University of Leipzig in 1865, an institution located closer to Nietzsche's hometown of Nuremberg, Nietzsche quickly established his own academic reputation through his published essays on two 6th century B.C.E. poets, Theognis and Simonides, as well as on Aristotle. In Leipzig, he developed a close friendship with Erwin Rode, 1845-1898, a fellow philology student and future philologist, with whom he would correspond extensively in later years. Three momentous for Nietzsche in 1865 was his accidental discovery of Arthur Schopenhauer's The World as Woven Representation, 1818, in a local bookstore. He was then 21. Schopenhauer s a theistic and turbulent vision of the world. In conjunction with his high praise of music as an art form, captured Nietzsche's imagination. And the extent to which the cadaverous perfume of Schopenhauer's worldview continued to permeate Nietzsche's mature thought remains a matter of scholarly debate. Who, after discovering Schopenhauer, Nietzsche read F. A. Lange's newly published History of Materialism and Critique of Its Present Significance, 1866, a work that criticizes materialist theories from the standpoint of Kant's critique of metaphysics, and that attracted Nietzsche's interest for its view that metaphysical speculation is an expression of poetic illusion. 1867 as he approached the age of 23, Nietzsche entered his required military service and was assigned to an equestrian field artillery regiment close to Nuremberg, during which time he lived at home with his mother. Attempting to leap mount into the saddle, 
he suffered a serious chest injury and was put on sick leave after his chest wound refused to heal. He returned shortly thereafter to the University of Leipzig and November of 1868, met the composer Richard Wagner, 1813-1883, at the home of Hermann Brockhaus, 1806-1877, an Orientalist who was married to Wagner's sister, Adelie. Brockhaus was himself a specialist in Sanskrit and Persian whose publications included, 1850. An edition of the Vendita Chade A text of the Zoroastrian religion, whose prophet was Zarathustra, Zoroaster. On Wagner and Nietzsche shared an enthusiasm for Schopenhauer. And Nietzsche, who had been composing piano, choral and orchestral music since he was a teenager, admired Wagner for his musical genius, magnetic personality and cultural influence. Wagner was the same age Nietzsche's father would have been, and he had also attended the University of Leipzig many years before. The Nietzsche-Wagner relationship was quasi-familial and sometimes stormy, and it affected Nietzsche deeply. Or early on, he could write, in 1869, that his friendship with Wagner was the greatest achievement, die Grossturngenskaft, of his life and he was still energetically engaged in appraising and pondering Wagner's cultural significance 20 years later at the end of his writing life. But Nietzsche broke with Wagner personally and intellectually in the late 1870s, and his assessments became increasingly negative, and more and more explicit, as time went on. Nevertheless, even after their breaks, 2K1 Nietzsche was still reminiscing wistfully in 1882 about how his days with Wagner had been the best of his life. During the months surrounding Nietzsche's initial meeting with Wagner, Ritchell recommended Nietzsche for a position on the classical philology faculty at the University of Basel. To the Swiss University offered Nietzsche the professorial position, and he began teaching there in May, 1869, at the age of 24. When at Basel, Nietzsche's satisfaction with his life among his philology colleagues was limited, and he established closer intellectual ties to the historians Franz Overbeck, 1837-1905 and Jacob Burkhardt, 1818-1897, whose lectures he attended. Overbeck, who roomed for five years in the same house as Nietzsche, became Nietzsche's close and enduring friend, exchanging many letters with him over the years, and rushing to Nietzsche's assistance in Turin immediately after his devastating collapse in 1889. Nietzsche also cultivated his friendship with Richard Wagner and visited him often at his Swiss home in Tribsen, a small town near Lucerne. Never in outstanding health, further complications arose from Nietzsche's August to October 1870 service as a 25-year-old hospital attendant during the Franco-Prussian War, 1870-71 where he participated in the Siege of Metz. He witnessed the traumatic effects of battle, took close care of wounded soldiers, and contracted diphtheria and dysentery. Nietzsche's enthusiasm for Schopenhauer, his studies in classical philology, his inspiration from Wagner, his reading of Lang, his interests in health, his professional need to prove himself as a young academic, and his frustration with the contemporary German culture, all coalesced in his first book, book The Birth of Tragedy, 1872 which was published in January 1872 when Nietzsche was 27. Wagner showered the book with praise, but a vitriolic, painfully memorable, and yet authoritative critical reaction by Ulrich von Willem Olitz M. O. Lendorf, 
who later became one of Germany's leading philologists immediately dampened the book's reception, not to mention Nietzsche's class enrollments in Basel. 201 Willem Oetz Mollendorf came from an aristocratic family of distant Polish descent and knew Nietzsche as a student at Schilforda. In his critique, he referred to Nietzsche as a disgrace to Schilforda and said that in light of the latter's prophetic, soothsaying, exaggerated and historically uninformed style of writing, Nietzsche should instead gather tigers and panthers about his knees, but not the youth of Germany. It is intriguing that in Thus Spoke Zarathustra, written thirteen years later, Nietzsche invokes the comparable imagery of a lion nuzzling warmly at the knee of Zarathustra in the book as concluding and inspirational scene, as if to acknowledge that his proper audience is, indeed, not a set of university professors. As Nietzsche continued his residence in Switzerland between 1872 and 1879, he often visited Wagner at his new, 1872, home in Bayreuth, Germany. In 1873, he met Paul Rhee, 1849-1901, who, while living in close company with Nietzsche and Sorrento during the autumn of 1876, would write on the origin of moral feelings, 1877. During this time, Nietzsche completed a series of four studies on contemporary German culture The Unfashionable Observations, 1873-76 which focus respectively upon 1. The historian of religion and culture critic, David Strauss 2. Issues concerning the social value of historiography 3. Arthur Schopenhauer and 4. Richard Wagner both as heroic inspirations for new cultural standards. One near the end of his university career, Nietzsche completed Human, All Too Human, 1878, a book that marks a turning point in his philosophical style and that, while reinforcing his friendship with Re, also ends his friendship with the anti-Semitic Wagner who comes under attack in a thinly disguised characterization of the artist. Dot. Despite the damage done by the unflattering review of The Birth of Tragedy, Nietzsche remained respected in his professorial position in Basel. But his deteriorating health, which led to migraine headaches, eyesight problems and vomiting, necessitated his resignation from the university in June, 1879, at age 34. 3. At this point, he had been a university professor for 10 years, and had just less than another 10 years of productive intellectual life remaining. 2. R1 from 1880 until his collapse in January 1889. Nietzsche led a wandering, Roma-like existence as a stateless person, having given up his German citizenship, and not having acquired Swiss citizenship, circling almost annually between his mother's house in Nomburg in various French, Swiss, German and Italian cities. R2 His travels took him through the Mediterranean seaside city of Nice, during the winters, the Swiss Alpine village of Sils Maria, during the summers, located near the present-day ski resort of St. Moritz, Leipzig, where he had attended university, and had been hoping to resume his teaching career in 1883. Turin, Genoa, Ricoro. Messina, Rapallo, Florence, Venice, and Rome. Never residing in any place longer than several months at a time. One on a visit to Rome in 1882, Nietzsche, now at age 37, met Lou von Salome, 
1861-1937, a 21-year-old Russian woman who was studying philosophy and theology in Zurich. He quickly fell in love with her. U.S. to declining to develop her relationship with Nietzsche on a romantic level. Nietzsche's friendship with her and Paul Rey took a turn for the worse. For Salome and Rey left Nietzsche and moved to Berlin. In the years to follow, Salome would become an associate of Sigmund Freud and would write with psychological insight of her association with Nietzsche. As for Salome also shows some real insight into Nietzsche's works and was one of the first to propose the division of Nietzsche's writings into early, middle, and late periods. These nomadic years were the occasion of Nietzsche's main works, among which are Daybreak, 1881, The Gay Science, 1882-1887, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, 1883-85, Beyond Good and Evil, 1886, and On the Genealogy of Morals, 1887. To T. To Nietzsche's final act of year, 1888, saw the completion of the case of Wagner, May to August 1888. Twilight of the Idols, August to September 1888, The Antichrist, September 1888. Ecce Homo, October to November 1888, and Nietzsche contra Wagner, December 1888. One on the morning of January 3, 1889, while in Turin, Nietzsche experienced a mental breakdown which left him an invalid for the rest of his life. Coincidentally, on virtually the same date, viz. January 4, his little brother, Joseph, had died many years before. 3. Nietzsche, upon witnessing a horse being whipped by a coachman at the Piazza Carlo Alberto, Though although this episode with the horse could be anecdotal, threw his arms around the horse's neck and collapsed in the plaza, never to return to full sanity. And some argue that Nietzsche was afflicted with a syphilitic infection. This was the original diagnosis of the doctors in Basel and Gina. Contracted either while he was a student or while he was serving as a hospital attendant. To some claim that his use of chloral hydrate, a drug which he had been using as a sedative, undermined his already weak and nervous system. Some, some speculate that Nietzsche's collapse was due to a brain disease he inherited from his father. Some maintain that a mental illness gradually drove him insane. Some maintain that he suffered from a slow growing frontal cranial base tumor. Some maintain that he suffered from codicil syndrome, a hereditary stroke disorder. 2v4 Some maintain that Nietzsche suffered from a tumor on the surface of the brain growing behind his right eye. The exact cause of Nietzsche's incapacitation remains unclear that he had an extraordinarily sensitive nervous constitution and took an assortment of medications is well documented as a more general fact. And to complicate matters of interpretation, Nietzsche states in a letter from April 1888 that he never had any symptoms of a mental disorder. One during his creative years, Nietzsche struggled to bring his writings into things into print and never doubted that his books would have a lasting cultural effect. 2. He did not live long enough to experience his world historical influence, but he had a brief glimpse of his growing intellectual importance and discovering that he was the subject of 1888 lectures given by Georg Brandt, Georg Morris Cohen, at the University of Copenhagen to whom he directed the above April 1888. Nietzsche's collapse, however, followed soon thereafter. 
Ubai won after a brief hospitalization in Basel. He spent 1889 in a sanatorium in Jena at the Bin Swanger Clinic. And in March 1890 his mother took him back home to Nomburg, where he lived under her care for the next seven years in the house he knew as a youngster. After his mother's death in 1897, his sister Elizabeth, Elizabeth having returned home from Paraguay in 1893, where she had been working since 1886 with her husband Bernhard F Forster to establish an Aryan, anti-Semitic German colony called New Germany, New Germania, he assumed responsibility for Nietzsche's welfare. In an effort to promote her brother's philosophy, she rented the Villa Silberblick, a large house in Weimar, and moved both Nietzsche and his collected manuscripts to the residence. Three, this became the new home of the Nietzsche archives, which had been located at the family home for the three years preceding where Elizabeth received visitors who wanted to observe the now incapacitated philosopher. One on August 25, 1900, Nietzsche died in the villa as he approached his 56th year, apparently of pneumonia in combination with a stroke. To his body was then transported to the family grave site directly beside the church in Rock and Bay Lutzen, where his mother and sister now also rest. The Villa Silberblick was eventually turned into a museum, and since 1950, Nietzsche's manuscripts have been located in Weimar at the Goethe Unschiller Archive.